Good day. I'm H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. Today's camera person is, I can't stand that. I, the cam, forever, I was brought up on cameraman, but today's camera person is Candace. And so uh, we appreciate her help. Jen is running the board and uh, hope the show goes well for you. Uh, now we're going to start off with a little local news and entertainment. This is the West Hartford Press, and it's showing an ad for Hall's, what do they call it, Hall's Market. I've been in there a couple of times. It's sort of uh, from a different era, and I really like it. It is predominantly oriented towards meat, which is not exactly my cup of tea or recommendations. Uh, it's not high on organic uh, vegetables, but I think it does have some. But it's an interesting store to go into, and I think people from West Hartford should support their locals, whatever, and find there what you can that you should. So once again, that's Hall's Market as demonstrated in the West Hartford Press. In addition, uh, rather surprisingly, uh, I have a card here from BJ's. BJ's has a fair amount of organic vegetables and organic fruits. And uh, generally, I suspect that they are just about the lowest price uh, in town. So I encourage you to check out BJ's too. Next is um, Trader Joe's. Uh, I live, uh, what is this, the South End? And Well, anyhow, I don't live near Trader Joe's. So uh, Trader Joe's has lots of really uh, very well-priced. Now, I go to Whole Foods all the time. I spend a ton of money at Whole Foods, and yes, the joke of whole paycheck. But uh, Trader Joe's uh, actually has much better pricing but far more limited number of choices. Now, let's see here. That's also Trader Joe's. Uh, this was an interesting ad. This is from Life Extension Foundation. Uh, I would encourage people to join Life Extension Foundation just to get their journal. Uh, I think it's 50 bucks a year, but it might be less. I know that's a lot of money. That's not a number I recognize, so we'll pass on that and I'll check it out later. Uh, Life Extension Foundation, and they have this coffee that they say is raised in a different fashion so that you get the chlorogenic acid, C-H-L-O-R-O-G-E-N-I-C, chlorogenic acid in the coffee. Uh, and I, I wish I knew how to make that cold brew. Uh, I don't, I go to Dunkin' Donuts. I like their dark roast. Uh, I get one cup. Yes, I've confessed that on every show for the past six months. Uh, and uh, so I don't really understand the process of cold brew coffee, but I think I could make it at home, and I'd like it just as well as Dunkin' Donuts. But, you know, taking that first step is always so difficult. But getting back to Life Extension Foundation, they have this special coffee that, uh, what do they say about it? Uh, most of the coffee polyphenols are destroyed during the typical roasting process. So they do something differently here. This is 100% natural process, uh, so on and so on. This was uh, a featured article in Life Extension Foundation, and it's about cilantro. Cilantro is one of my favorite herbs, cilantro and dill. Everybody talks about rosemary and thyme and oregano and basil and, of course, garlic. But uh, cilantro uh, is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite herbs to flavor things, as is the combination of lemon plus lime. That is really a great way to replace salt. You use it at the table, uh, on your uh, whatever, including in soups. You, don't, you can't use too much in soups, but it takes it directly towards salt with no salt. Once again, Life Extension Foundation. This was a, a section that they had on the vegan cookbook. The thing I would tell you about all vegan cooking is this. It's important to buy unprocessed foods. Uh, buy brown rice better than brown rice pasta. Buy apples better than apple juice. Buy almonds better than almond butter. Unprocessed, ideally organic, whole foods exactly as they grow up out of the ground and in the field. So all you have to remember is one word, field. 
Does this food grow up out of the ground and in the field in exactly the form that I'm going to buy it? And then I'm going to either eat it raw or prepare it myself. So if you cook, you buy the brown rice and uh, you cook it yourself. Uh, at uh, BJ's, there's an interesting packet of quinoa plus brown rice that has already been cooked once. Uh, and so you just throw in hot water. I sort of don't understand how that works, but at least it's better than having a hamburger or pizza. Uh, this was an article. Oh, gee, I'm doing a lot from Life Extension. Well, I just got the journal yesterday. Uh, defend yourself. I believe that most people should be on 5,000 units of vitamin D a day. 5,000 units, not 500, not 400, not 1,000, not 2,000, 5,000, I believe. I can't treat on this TV show. Uh, these are my opinions, and of course, you want to run everything past your health care practitioner um, who may or may not agree with what I say. So vitamin D, 5,000 units a day, five days a week. And what you want to do is have your blood level checked so that you get to the range of 50 to 66. Now, interestingly, I just read an article about patients with multiple sclerosis who were treated with 10,000 units a day, and they had a much reduced incidence of uh, recurrence of, of, of multiple sclerosis. In addition, heart failure, if treated with vitamin D, has an improvement in blood vessel function. So, healthy aging and your DNA. Uh, here's a product from um, Life Extension that I'm not quite sure about yet. And the reason is it contains xanthovital from hops extract. And that may or may not be uh, as good for you as they sort of imply. It's called DNA protection, and you can check it out yourself. This is something, uh, I don't know where I saw this, uh, I saw it online, activated charcoal. I think I saw this on Amazon. This is for brushing your teeth, it's kind of funny. It's pure charcoal powder, which of course is very black and very fine, and they tell you to be careful opening the bottle because you do not want to get that black powder on anything. And apparently it's a whitening, uh, natural teeth whitening, and I think that's probably correct. Now I have, um, uh, discussion here. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. Um, well, that'll do as a start. Is that a pretty inclusive list? Uh, let me stop there and make a detour. Elon Musk, who invented or created PayPal and then sold out for billions and is a billionaire and is now doing SpaceX. Now, how do you go from being an entrepreneur that comes up with PayPal to building rockets that are now going past Mars and all the way out and taking one of his Teslas? That's another of his adventures. What's the relationship here? Somebody said, somebody wrote, that uh, Elon Musk's way of thinking is to ask two questions. What does this remind me of? Why does it remind me of that? Now, those are interesting questions. And you see, really, uh, I am not Elon Musk, but that's sort of the way I go about things. What does this remind me of? Uh, so I read that thing about that DNA protection with xanthohumo. I read it in one of these other journals about uh, how to reduce the incidence of prostate cancer. Not the same thing, but about the hops extract. And so that, that ad for that product, DNA Protect, reminded me of the article that I read in the, uh, about prostate cancer prevention and the, the research in the prostate cancer uh, protection basically said, be careful, there's an estrogenic effect. Now, we're talking about men with prostate, and estrogen is about being female. Yes, men have estrogen, but they said that it might turn things up a little bit too much uh, to use the current hops extract, and that's why they had a different product in mind, which I'm not sure is what uh, Life Extension Foundation had. So I let things kind of slosh around. But I go again, generalize, and then integrate. 
I guess that's an, another way of saying uh, how to go about looking at the world and building your own information and thinking. Now, I watched um, something on TV, uh, on uh, YouTube, uh, that uh, Greg Fortin, who is here uh, today, uh, he's uh, trying to uh, get poor hopeless me uh, some speaking gigs, which obviously I do this show, I really like doing speaking gigs, and I think I'm full of, uh, I think I have a lot to say. So, <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, Greg is trying to help me out, and so I, he sends me these things to watch, and I watch them, and I watched a TED Talk on um, uh, how do you learn things, and the answer was it takes 20 hours of work to learn something. The guy who was giving the talk, excellent speaker, and also a decent singer and ukulele play, player, talked about how he learned to use, uh, how he learned to play the ukulele. And he says it takes 20 hours. He said you have to break things down into their component parts. That is the hard part, knowing what are the relevant, most important component parts. But what he ended up saying is sort of obvious, but I wouldn't have thought of it. He said there are five chords that are responsible for playing the vast majority of whether it was pop or whatever kinds of tunes. And he played some famous ukulele song that I recognized but he only used four or five chords. So you break things down into their component parts and you work on those component parts and you, you learn quickly how to do those things and you learn quickly what you're doing wrong. And of course, all of that is above my pay, intellectual pay grade. Uh, I go to a website, a change of subject, for a change, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I go to a website called Quora and they have lots of stuff on physics and astronomy and cosmology, which I'm really interested in, but talk about above my pay grade. I don't understand any of that stuff when they talk about speed of the light or if you, if you were riding on the speed of light and you turned on a flashlight, would it be faster or whatever? And they talk about mass or massless uh, neutrinos. So, uh, you know, I get some of that stuff, but I don't really put it together very well, which, by the way, is the name of this show, Putting It All Together. Now, uh, I don't know where I was, so I guess we'll change gears. I was asked to talk about flu shots today, and um, I am in the distinct minority of physicians who is simply uncertain about the benefit of flu shots. Uh, the, I've always said it this way, the injection of a foreign protein without pretty much guaranteed results seems like a pretty bad idea to me. Now you might say, well, this has been tested for forever. And all I can say is there are some very intelligent people who say that the testing is covering up important details. You know, this whole thing about autism and uh, too many uh, immunizations when people are children. Uh, and I simply don't know, but like I said, I hark back to the idea that the injection of a foreign protein does not strike me as a great idea. So uh, this year, they apparently missed it almost completely, but they go around saying the, the, the forces, the sources, the authorities go around saying, well, if you get the flu, it's going to be better. Uh, I'm not so sure that is or is not the case. The fact of the matter is I remain questioning, even though all pediatricians practically and everybody in infectious disease, uh, people whom I really respect, say it's a great idea, should be done. As a matter of fact, I can't go into the hospital halfway, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I can't go into the hospital, St. Francis Hospital, unless I have my tag for showing that I got the flu shot. So... Um, uh, and another thing I want to talk about, the flu shot. If you're under the age of 65, next year, if you are going to get the flu shot, insist on the low dose, low dose flu shot, not the regular dose. If you're, the immunization benefit is greater with the low dose injection, which is only 40% of the full dose injection. 
Now, giving you specific numbers, the full dose flu shot is 0.5 cc's. The low dose is 0.2 cc's. So 0.2 over 0.5 is 40%. So you can save six, you cannot get injected 60% of the dose by getting the low dose. Now, what do you do if you're above age 65? Well, it, it has been shown that immunity goes down as you get older. And interestingly, this year I had something that kept me out of work for two days. Uh, is it true? Kept me out of work one day. Uh, but I was sick the first day. So um, I was sick on a Thursday. I was out Friday. I recovered on Saturday and Sunday and so on. Now, was it the flu? I didn't have any fever. I didn't have any cough. I had a very runny nose. I didn't have any diarrhea. I didn't have any nausea. And I felt like I was on Jupiter in terms of gravity. I was so weak. I could barely move. And uh, I couldn't even bring myself to uh, get any food. Fortunately, Angels of Mercy came and brought me uh, uh, chicken soup. And it was exactly what I needed. And all I did was sleep the entire weekend. But I was much better by Monday, uh, having started to get sick on Thursday, out Friday, recovering Saturday and Sunday, uh, wanting to be just left alone. Uh, as a matter of fact, from a point of humor, uh, I'm one of those people who likes to be left alone. That used to be absolutely not me. And this is interesting. That was not me before the invention of the, before the internet became real to me. I am so fascinated with the internet and all the stuff that's on it that I literally can sit there all day, all day, all day, all night, all evening, all this and that. And between the internet and what's on TV, uh, deal me in. Well, anyhow, so um, I my skin used to crawl if I had to stay home alone. Even though I was always a TV drug addict, now I don't mean drug addict, I mean I watched so much TV it was like an addiction, but uh, uh, there's a point at which the TV gets a little boring too, there's a point at which the online gets a little boring too, and thank goodness for the combination, but I could not stand to be alone. Then after the arrival of the TV and the internet, uh, I really like being left alone. So here's the funny part. <clears throat> on my tombstone, they're going to write, they finally left him alone. Now, don't you think that's really clever and funny? I think that is so funny, and I'm not a funny person. It's just not my nature. So back to the flu shot. Um, people over the age of 65 have reduced immunity, so they have to get a double dose. Well, let's do some... Cre what, does what does this remind me of? Why does it remind me of it? So I thought that um, if the low dose, the 40% dose, could give you good immunization if you were under the age of 65, then why not give yourself two separate low doses, which would be supposedly equal to the full dose, uh, let's see, for over the age of 65. So you'd end up getting 0.4 cc, and what I suggest is you get 0.2 cc's uh, at point A, and then you get 0.2 cc's at point B. And the time distance, who knows, but I think two weeks is probably what's about right. Now, I did that so that I said I got my flu shot. Uh, whether or not the hospital thinks that's kosher, I'm not so sure. But regardless is, maybe it did make my flu a little less typical and a little less dangerous, and maybe it didn't. So be careful about jumping to conclusions, which is exactly what's going on wrong in politics currently. People are jumping to conclusions and they're taking up ideological positions rather than looking at what is actually factual. Now, I like to write also, so I wrote on the New York Times blog, I forget what, which one it was, I think it was Charles Blow, um, I wrote something that I actually thought was pretty smart myself, and that was, I said, if we Democrats are going to get ahead, we do not need to constantly object and resist what the Republicans are doing. 
we need to join with them and make incremental improvements and then claim those improvements when it comes to election time. Now, that was actually done with the recent legislation. Uh, the thing about Trump is he likes to negotiate. That's his big thing, the art of the deal. And so what I'm saying is you've got to let the Republicans have some of what they want. And at the same time, you go ahead and you add a little bit of this and that, but you don't stand there and fight. I think Nancy Pelosi is ridiculous. I think uh, <laughs> I have to laugh at Trump's term, crying Chuck Schumer is ridiculous. I mean, occasionally he seems normal. I was so hopeful when I saw he was coming in. I thought, now there's a man who can speak and think and so on, and he has been such a disappointment to me. And bear in mind, I'm a liberal Democrat so far back, I don't want to tell you how far back, because then you'll know how old I am and you'll think I'm old. And uh, I read a funny joke about uh, people who are, uh, it was just a joke. It says, it's strange how people my age look so old. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, anyhow, uh, next, uh, the shingles, shingles injection. I did get the shingle shot, injection of a foreign protein. That one scares me. If there were one for AIDS, I'd get that too, because that one scares me. You might say, now, wait a minute. How am I going to get AIDS? I don't care how I'm going to get AIDS. I don't have AIDS, HIV or whatever it is. If, that is such a scary subject that I would get that immunization. There is a new shingles vaccination out that is better than the old shingles vaccination. And it's called Shingrix, S-H-I-N-G-R-I-X. And I strongly recommend that people get the Shingrix vaccination. I think it's for people over the age of 50, but I'm not sure. Uh, I have seen some people really suffer with shingles pain, although I must say the vast majority of them, it's just a little itching and burning and pain and uh, that they can live with it. Uh, I've only had a few patients that went on to narcotics. Uh, okay, so enough of that. Uh, I was going to talk about the West Hartford budget and so on, uh, but uh, go ahead and think about it. Oh, it's heart month. I'm a cardiologist. It's a heart month. Oh. I started a whole discussion and never finished it. 95% of diabetes, 95% of high blood pressure, 95% of high cholesterol, 95% of high triglycerides, five minutes, completely preventable and reversible. Completely. If you want to know what the solution to the current healthcare cost problem is, it is prevent diseases. We need to be infinitely tougher on cigarettes. Alcohol should be limited to four drinks a week or less. I'm not here to argue with anybody. You're looking at a person who's seen over 200,000 patient visits, who's been in practice for over X number of years, which is a lot. Ah, 40 years. Uh, so, uh, and you need to take a look at me and say, ah, this guy is wacko, or this guy is right. Actually, you can have a halfway position and say that he's half wacko and half right. But uh, really, uh, I'm telling you that we need to address diet. Diet has to be 75% plus, and ideally 90% plus, on field. Remember the word field? Unprocessed whole foods, ideally organic, that grow up out of the ground and in the field. Don't argue with me, that's our biology. I am not arguing with you. I'm telling you what fits our teeth, our digestion, uh, the way we're built, the way our bowels function, what makes for the proper intestinal bacteria, microbiome. It ain't probiotics, although I'm not opposed to those. By the way, if you take supplements of any kind, any kind, five days a week, you heard it from me when I talked about vitamin D five days a week. So 95% um, uh, of diabetes, 95% of high blood pressure, 95% of high triglycerides, 95% of uh, open heart surgery, 95% of dialysis, all those things can be prevented at the 95% level. 
Here's a little pearl, two for two. Now, what does this remind me of and why does it remind me of it? We're back to Elon Musk. When I looked at what is in the AIRED's vitamin for the treatment of macular degeneration, I thought they almost got it right. The lutein and zeaxanthin are molecularly what are called unipolar, one pole. Now, I'm, I may be off in my biochemistry on that, but there is in that family an, an antioxidant called astaxanthin, which is bipolar, and the body likes bipolar things. It can go here, it can go there, doesn't have to fight its way through. So I have put two patients with macular degeneration on astaxanthin, five, uh, four milligrams, uh, daily for two weeks, and then five days a week thereafter, and their macular degeneration has stopped. Now, you may say, oh, that's miraculous. You deserve the Nobel Prize. Yes, I deserve the Nobel Prize, but not for that. Uh, what I deserve the Nobel Prize for is the following, and I've shown it on this program many times. Diseases occur if and only if the person with a genetic tendency does what is necessary to express that genetic tendency. In that sense, all diseases are genetic, but merely represent the interaction of that particular person's behavior with their genetic makeup, just as a lighted match and, a gas and gasoline will not make a fire if you don't bring them together, and hence no disease. So the first part of that, what I just said, is what I think, my goodness, one minute. Hard to shut me up. Uh, <clears throat> the first part of that is what I honestly think that I deserve the Nobel Prize for. Anybody want to nominate me? Uh, how, how do I look on TV? Do I look pretty good? Think I can walk up there on, forget it. So anyhow, uh, good day. God bless you all. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for West Hartford Cable Access TV and the Preventive Medicine Center, and send millions fast. <laughs>